as you can see, uh, there are a lot of test cases we write. So, but as we write test case, we have to give checkpoints against each of the test cases. So, these are the different uh, checkpoints that we give against the, each of the test step. So, what is the uh, point of giving checkpoint is as we automate this against this checkpoint, the auto, uh, against all these uh, checkpoints, uh, the, when we automate, the relevant screenshots will be taken. So this is the screen where we write the test steps along with the expected results and give certain checkpoints. So once the test cases are written and approved, we write the scenarios. So this is a sample scenario. As you can see, uh, we write, uh, first of all, we write a workflow and which is converted to a scenario. We write the workflow and uh, create it into a scenario. So if I click on it, you'll be able to see, okay, what is this? Uh, this, is a diff this is a workflow, we give a title and description. And against this workflow, we start the scripts. We give the script. So in the platform, we define the scenarios and uh, for each scenario, what are the different test cases which needs to be you know, uh, automated. So for this particular scenario, there are three different test cases which needs to be automated. And uh, Against this, uh, we write some scenarios, and those for those scenarios, we submit the script. So once we submit the script, we can uh, run the test runs. So this is a sample test run. So uh, this is a project which we have already done for one of our clients. So if I click on it, so what will happen with the uh, screenshots or the checkpoints is, so once we uh, have the uh, execution done, once we run it on the platform, these are the screenshot which keeps on which are, which are taken. These are the screenshot which are taken during the run, and a video is created for the whole execution. So this is how the whole automation will be running on the platform, and you know uh, this is how uh, uh, this is the interface on this is the tester interface which will help run the platform uh, which will be running on the platform so now uh, what i will do is i make uh, maha who is our guest speaker today uh, i'll make him the presenter who will be taking us through the uh, demo of the uh, who will be taking us to the demo of the uh, the actual automation so some uh, so i'll just introduce maha quickly so Maha has a lot of experience in Maha has a lot of experience in uh, in the software industry for the and his main passion is uh, coding. He has spent the past twelve years writing code for animation software, games, and startups. And he has experienced a variety of languages and technologies, text including C++, Java, Python, and Ruby. He has worked and delivered projects with uh, Fortune 500 and many other clients like Disney Reliance and Huffington Post. And he, ran a, he runs an independent platform for a musician called Radio Flow. So let me do one thing. Let me pass on to Maha and make him the presenter. And so that he will take the conversation forward. Right. Uh, Uh, yes, Sorry, Maha, can, can I start? Yeah, yeah yes, Maha. We, uh, you can start over to you. And yeah, we right. can see your screen. Hey, uh, so, okay, fantastic. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming over for the webinar today. Um, so my goal in today's webinar would be to give you an overview of how you write test scripts for the 99 test automation platform. Uh, so I'll spend some time explaining how this works and then I'll spend another five or ten minutes talking about our open source initiative for uh, the 99 tests uh, automation platform, right? Um, so to start off, uh, let me start off by explaining how test scripts are written for the automation framework. So as Pankaj explained, um, when you had a look at the website, uh, there are these uh, workflows, right? And workflows in turn have scenarios. Scenarios have test cases. 
So uh, when you write a test script for automation on the 99 test platform, you're essentially writing all the code for a particular workflow. Okay. So what we have created is a template project which you can use to uh, create the tests for the automation platform. So this is a Eclipse Maven project. It's already set up with all the uh, configuration needed to integrate with the uh, 99Ts uh, platform. And uh, it's based on uh, the test ng suite. And basically what it does is the scripts that you write and test in this project you can then submit it to the uh, 99 test platform and then from there it will run on our um, you know selenium grid and uh, automation platform and then uh, the results will be showcased to the uh, client right so when you want to start writing scripts for the 99 test platform you start off by downloading this uh, template project we'll provide you the link for this uh, so you click on the clone or download button on GitHub and then you hit the download zip button. Make sure you don't clone the JIT uh, repository. This is just an example which you should use to make your own uh, workflow script. So let me download the zip file right now. Okay. So the zip file is downloaded and it's now available here under photon workflow test template master so uh, what this uh, uh, pro project contains is a pom uh, maven pom for configuration a test ng configuration which runs a single test suite uh, and a few uh, source files which integrate with our platform right so what i'm going to do first is import this project into eclipse so we'll choose file import and then make sure that you select the Maven, existing Maven project for import. So Maven, existing Maven project. And then we'll browse for that folder which we have. And we'll import this project. So now this project has appeared here as workflow test in my uh, Eclipse workspace, right? So um, the main file which you in which you will be writing the uh, test scripts is workflow test.java. This is within the com dot the ninety nine tests dot photon dot tests uh, package, right? So uh, let me just open this and quickly run you through uh, what this contains. Uh, let me just close all files right now. Yeah. Okay. So what this file essentially contains is a setup which integrates with the 99 test platform, but also allows you to run tests locally on your system, right? So uh, before the suit runs, we do a quick initialization of the Selenium web driver. Uh, and this you can change to, you know, Chrome or, uh, uh, you know, a remote web driver in the case of APM. Uh, so this uh, part, what runs within this uh, if block uh, sets up the uh, driver. So once the driver is set up, you initialize the photon session with the local session uh, and pass the driver into this. This is when you run, when the run, test is running on your system, okay. In, when the test runs on our platform, there's a separate setup which runs in this else block, which you don't need to worry about. So basically what it does is it sets up the driver and it sets up the platforms based on the uh, uh, platforms on which the, the uh, workflow needs to be tested, right? Um, but in your case, you'll only be modifying the driver setup specifically in case you don't want to use Firefox or you're using Chrome or in the case of Android, if you want to use the uh, APM uh, remote web driver, you, you you can change the setup here accordingly, right? Uh, similarly, after the suit runs, what ha happens is basically just a teardown of the Selenium web driver and the Photon session, right? Uh, internally, we call the automation uh, framework as Photon. So that's why the name Photon. 
So in order to write your tests, you pretty much write a typical test ng test. So you've got this uh, add test decorator, and then you put, uh, you know, you create, uh, you set up the function. Um, but then there is a difference in the way the test executes, right? Uh, so normally in test ng, what happens is that the test runs, and if the test runs successfully, you know, and no exceptions or anything are generated, uh, you know, the test passes or fails. But on the 99 test platforms, things work a bit differently. Against each test case step, you have a checkpoint, which Pankaj showed you uh, at that time. So what you need to do is, on successful execution of a test case step, you need to add the statement uh, photon session dot checkpoint and provide the name of the checkpoint from the test case. So this will have a bunch of numbers and a name, uh, but basically, when you view the test case, this uh, this tag, this checkpoint tag will show up on the website. So you just need to copy and paste it here, right? Uh, right. So uh, pretty much what you do is write the function and add the checkpoints. And if a checkpoint is reached, or if a checkpoint is generated through this line, photon session dot checkpoint, then that test case step is marked as successful. So the way we determine whether a test case is successful or not is by checking if the checkpoints against each test case step was reached. So when you write your code, you need to ensure that you generate these uh, checkpoints in your code, right? Now, so you go ahead and you know, uh, based on the test case. The uh, test cases which are defined, you write uh, your test case steps and everything. And then uh, uh, mm, once you do that, you'll need to package it and submit it to the 99 test platform. Now, I have a script written by a tester here. So, what I'm going to do is just to demonstrate this to you, I'm just going to uh, copy those uh, uh, scripts over right into this project. So what we have here is a workflow test.java. Uh, and so I'm just going to, instead of modifying the code, I'm just going to replace this file and then show you the test itself. Right. So let me just uh, refresh this. Yeah. Right. So. Um, so this is a typical test ng. Uh, uh, she has defined uh, parameters for username, password, etc. Um, and uh, and she has written the test. So pretty much a standard Selenium grid test. You know, driver dot get manage timeouts, uh, and then you find the web elements, enter the required username and password. Uh, now she has also defined a few variables in test ng the XML definition file, so I'm going to copy that also. Uh, you need to do this if you're adding some parameters for your test. In this case, she's using the username and password. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly check that this is done. OK, so, mm, so it's the same script that I showed you, I was show, explaining the documentation part to you from here. And now I've just replaced it with a file which actually contains the test itself, which is this particular function. Nothing else has changed. Uh, even the setup and all, if you see the way that the driver is set up, everything remains the same. Right? So now that you know we've magically written the test case, or rather uh, we have the tester's test script here, um, we'll just have to package this. So to package this, what we need to do is run a package goal against the Maven project. Uh, so the way to do this is you go to run configurations and then you say right click new here. And set up a name for your this thing, workflow tests package. Let's say you can use any name. And then I add this project. And the goal that I want to execute here is package. Right? So I apply this, run.
right? So this has created the package, uh, but before you actually create a package, um, in case you want to run your test script, you just have to run this test runner.java or you can execute the test ng XML file. You can do this either way. So let's just do a quick run to see if everything is fine. So yeah, it's uh, creating the browser. Let's come to the 99 test page. Sign in. Login. Right, and we are done. So um, let me just quickly refresh this project. So you'll notice that uh, it has created screenshots against each of these checkpoints. Login, username, password, home page. You can have a look at it if you want. Uh, this is after the username is entered. This is, you know, once the sign in has happened. So, but this is just for your reference locally. When you when the test is packaged and run on our platforms, the screenshots and video are generated separately. This is just for you to check that your test is working fine, your checkpoints are being hit, and that everything is uh, working as it should. Right. So once you're done with all of this, um, we run the package goal, which was the workflow test package. Right. So right here now you'll find that there is this zip file which is called workflow 0 0.0, 0.1 and a whole lot of other things snapshot photon package zip. So this zip file that you have here is what you then need to upload against the particular workflow to submit your script. Right. So this is a quick overview of how you write tests for the 99 test platform. You more or less just work with this workflow test.java. Uh, you can add other classes if you want. It's not a problem. If you want to add libraries, then you can add them to the POM dependencies. Uh, and, you know, um, then use those libraries. So the one thing that we don't support is adding a jar file directly. So please avoid doing that. Uh, you can add whatever dependency you want via the Maven dependencies and you should be able to use your uh, uh, scripts and it should work fine on our platform as well, right? Um, the other thing we have which is not shown here but will be a uh, uh, script that you'll get is a test data folder where you can add data that uh, need to be needs to be used during the test. So that is the other thing that will get added here, right? Um, so I have this, I haven't yet pushed it to GitHub, so that's why you're not seeing that. Uh, so there is this folder called test data, which you see here. Uh, that folder will also be available for you to put your data in. So when you package the scripts, basically the source file, the POM file, a few XML configuration files, um, and the test data folder get uploaded to the server. So the other any other files you have in other locations will not go. So please ensure that whatever is needed for the test is within these uh, particular folders, right? Um, another note is basically that the test that you're writing here can work on all platforms. It will work on Android, iOS, web. Uh, so in the case of Android and iOS, you need to use APM. In the case of uh, uh, the browsers, you need to use Selenium, right? So that's uh, pretty much about uh, the execution. So now I'm, let me just spend a couple of minutes um, describing our own initiative here. So what we, so the checkpointing code which I showed you, which is called Photon Session, right, uh, is a separate project that we've open sourced on uh, and is available on GitHub. So Photon Session currently has only the ability to checkpoint your test code. Uh, so uh, there's only stuff there which currently integrates with the 99 test platform so that the test runs smoothly. But what we want to do and the whole idea behind open sourcing this out is that you can contribute your own modules to this uh, Photon Session pro pro project to make it better. For example, if you write uh, some 
code which actually tests uh, a, a one time password an otp right um, so um, you know if you submit your otp code as part of the photon session project and you integrate it here uh, then pretty much every tester in the community will be able to use the same otp feature right so what we want to do is kind of uh, create a collaboration between the tester community and the 99 test community to ensure like to see that you know this kind of functionality which other testers will find useful can be integrated into this project and used by other testers as well right um, so that's like a very very quick overview of what we are doing um, don't worry if you don't understand everything we'll, we'll, we'll work more closely with you when you're actually writing the test scripts uh, so this um, talk here which I gave and this demo which I gave here is just to kind of introduce you to how it is uh, set up and how it should work right so as long as you get the overall picture um, you know it should be fine so thanks so much for listening so far I hope I was clear and you were able to understand anything um, if you didn't understand any points just make sure you are writing those questions out on the uh, questions uh, tab so that uh, we can answer them. thank you so much uh Thank you so much, Maha, for the detailed explanation. So uh, we are opening up a question and answer. So if you have any questions, uh, you can type it in the questions tab and we will be taking up those questions. So uh, we still have 10 minutes left for the webinar and we'll be taking questions for the next 10 minutes. OK, Maha, so uh, we have the first question. OK. Uh, Question is: You are using find elements and web elements keyword, and all the keywords related to Selenium, but you haven't imported Selenium jar file in your project. Then how it is working out? So yeah, so the reason why the jar file is not there is because, or rather, the jar file is there, but it is imported and via Maven, right? So you can see here that I have my dependencies in the palm. Uh, palm file of the maven project so in the maven project I specified selenium server selenium java test ng and photon session as dependencies right so that's how it's working maven will automatically download jar files and libraries required right once you add the dependency so actually you won't have to worry about this because automatically when you import this project into Eclipse, it will automatically download whatever is necessary to run the tests. So, but I am just explaining since you asked the question. Okay. Uh, thank you, Maha. The next question is, uh, where can we add te uh, test data? Right. So, again, you know, uh, this is something which we haven't yet pushed. There is a folder called test data. Uh, uh, so when you actually start working on the project uh, and you download the zip file, it will contain a test data folder. You can add your uh, test data there. Okay. Uh, another question which is coming up is, what are the features and libraries currently available? So these are the four libraries that we are using, Selenium Server, Selenium Java, TestNG, and Photon Session, right? But you can add any other library via Maven. Okay, just ensure that you don't add a jar file directly. Add the uh, dependency, add uh, whatever library that you want to use, add it via Maven. Most of the jar files or library files that you are typically using, you'll be able to find it uh, as a Maven dependency and add it uh, directly into the uh, POM file here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there, is, there was another question, uh, I think, which is related to the one you answered. Uh, it says we can, uh, as we cannot import jar file, we cannot use logger and report extent. So I think uh, you have already answered that we can import jar, right? Yes, you can add the dependency via Maven, right? Uh, so for example, if you have a, your let's say your test data is an Excel sheet and you want to use some good uh, library for reading Excel sheets, most of these libraries will be available on the Maven repository, right? So all you need to do is add it here. You can just do an add. And then, you know, you for, for Maven, you always specify the group ID and the artifact ID. Uh, once you specify this, those uh, jar files will get automatically added. And when it runs on our platform, uh, it will automatically download those jars from Maven and execute it. 
Okay. Uh, I have another question which says, uh, do we need any additional configuration for data parameterization? Uh, I don't understand the question fully, but uh, if you can add parameters into TestNG, right? Uh, otherwise, you can add the test, I mean, you can probably use the test data folder, right? But as of now, we don't have any predefined framework for adding test data. You, you can probably say if you're using an Excel sheet, then you add the Excel sheet, or if you're using JSON, then you just add the JSON file and then add the Maven library to, uh, uh, you know, read those files and, uh, uh, you know, create your test scripts accordingly, right? Okay. Uh... I have a few more questions which probably I would be able to answer. So question is how do we sign up for automation work in 99 tests? So uh, as you uh, are you know, part of the webinar, you already would have been a tester in 99 tests. So what is uh, expected is we are gradually building a community for our automation testers. And uh, post this webinar, uh, also we'll be publishing the video and the blog regarding the same. So what you can do is you can go through it and if you have any questions, you can get back to us. Uh, we'll also publish the email IDs and the other mediums through which you can get back to us. And uh, uh, as we keep on growing the automation testers community, you would be able to, uh, and we start more automation work, you would be getting more opportunities to work on internet test automation projects that we you know, launch for our clients. Okay. Uh, I have few more questions coming up. Uh, uh, there is a question from Shikha uh, and she says, I don't have experience in test NG, but I have enough experience in Selenium. Can I also contribute? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it uh, boils down to the same thing. So, I mean, yeah. uh, it's just the way you declare the test that changes. Uh, there is a small syntax changes here, you know, the way you declare the test, right? Uh, so, other than that, the rest of the code is pure Selenium and uh, uh, Photon session stuff. So, okay. And uh, uh, I have another question: uh, How can we map the snapshots with test cases? We might have multiple checkpoints in the same test case. Uh, Maha, let me try to answer. If I miss something, you can add on to it. So, yeah. uh, so as we uh, write checkpoints, so a test a test case will have multiple steps. And each for each step, we are defining a checkpoint. So uh, for each of the checkpoints, we get a we get a snapshot. So when we automate, we give the checkpoint name for each of the test steps, and hence uh, the screenshots are taken for each of the different steps rather than the whole test case as a whole, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it enough, or yeah. you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, what kind of framework is this, or which framework is this? So essentially, it's a custom framework built on top of uh, Selenium, uh, which we have built internally at Ninety Nine Tests. Okay, and there are a few more questions regarding the recording of the sessions. Yes, so uh, post the webinar, uh, maybe uh, in a couple of days or by next week, we would be sending the recording and a blog post regarding the webinar. So uh, you will have all these recorded sessions available for your reference later on. Uh, another question from uh, Naga Devi, and she is asking, I am in US, can I contribute? Yes, everyone all over the world, we have testers around the globe, and everyone is welcome to contribute. To 99 tests and uh, you know contribute and also you know uh, use your experience to make uh, to work on different kinds of projects and also you know uh, as you work you make money from the projects uh, another question regarding appium uh, can uh, can you share the prerequisite for appium configuration Uh, so, uh, for in the case of APM, the yes. driver set up here, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, your screen uh, is visible. My screen is visible, right? So, uh, yeah. um, 
this part where it says photon session dot is local. That's the sweet setup. Uh, the uh, setup for the test ng suit. Uh, here, instead of new Firefox driver, you can just put a remote web driver. Here. That's it. And you know, you configure, you add your, um, you know, uh, capabilities, or you know, add your setup code for your driver right here. Right. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so uh, again, uh, Maha, there are a couple or more than two, three, four questions, which is directly asking what is what is photo session, and can you please explain again uh, uh, briefly about that? All right. Okay. So, photon session is 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 a library uh, which communicates with the ninety nine tests automation framework, right? So. I talked about checkpointing and all that. So when you do these checkpoints via photon session dot checkpoint, uh, then it actually uh, registers that that particular test case step has executed successfully. It takes a screenshot of it, um, and all those uh, uh, all that data which it then gathers, it turns into reports of the of of how the test executed what test case passed failed etc so photon session is is sort of the layer that communicates with the uh, 99 test platform okay so uh, again maha there are more questions uh, which says uh, people uh, testers asking like they also want to contribute this to this open source project so is that possible or and if yes how could they contribute to this open source project um so i think so basically the repository is public so you can go ahead and make modification and send in pull requests um but that said i think so basically what we'll be doing is we'll soon be creating uh, adding like whoever joins will be adding them into a slack channel as well so um once you get onto Slack with us, then you know probably you can put out uh, your ideas, your suggestions, and then you know uh, it could be a more coordinated effort. But then, I mean, that is only if you want to talk to us and then decide, okay, is this good or not? Should we add it or not? But otherwise, you're free to just you know uh, uh, clone the repository, add your stuff, and send in uh, pull requests to us. So uh, you just have to clone the repository from GitHub and. Uh, Make a modification. Send in your pull requests. That's it. Okay. So I'll be taking two more questions. Uh, last two questions. So uh, one of is again a repeat uh, where uh, Rinku is asking. Uh, I couldn't hear what needs to be updated instead of Firefox driver against the Appium question. Could you please repeat that part again? Right. Um, so I think if you look at the screen. Um, uh, you can see here that um, there is this new Firefox driver that is being set up as the driver, right? So all you need to do here is instead of Firefox, write the same initialization code that you'll use for APM, right? Uh, which will be that you'll set the desired capabilities, you'll set the APK uh, app uh, URL, uh, or you'll you you know uh, the main activity name. All that stuff you can you can set up right here, right? So currently, this is set up with Firefox. Now, if I wanted Chrome driver, I could just go here and change this to Chrome driver, right? And the test would execute on Chrome. Similarly, you can change this to remote web driver, right? And uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, set up the APM uh, uh, driver. So maybe if you haven't, uh, if you're not getting this, it's probably because um, I'm not so sure, but the way I have seen a APM being used is that you run an instance of APM and then connect it via web driver, right? Uh, you don't launch an APM uh, uh, instance directly from your Java code. You launch APM separately with the emul emulator and then use the remote web driver to communicate. So that's the same uh, setup I'm talking about here. Okay. Uh and uh, the final question for the day is uh, regarding checkpoints. So uh, question is like there are two parts to the question. Is checkpoint, uh, so while writing test cases, is the checkpoint really necessary to be given? 
and can you also explain a bit about the checkpoint method that you showed previously right so to answer question one yes because we don't use the test ng status to figure out whether the test case passed or not what we use is um, we for every successful test case execution uh, you write this photon session dot checkpoint and you give the checkpoint name what we do is we see whether all the checkpoints have been reached and then determine whether the test case uh, passed or failed why do we do this one so that we can give very very clear and detailed feedback about which step failed on what platform did it fail you know so it's not just whether oh this step test passed this test failed every time you do a checkpoint there's a screenshot supporting showing what stage what the user sees at that point of time or uh, you know what the test script is seeing at that point etc so to answer question one yes necessary two uh, why do we use checkpoints uh, we use it to tally which test case steps have passed and which ones have failed and we provide screenshots and uh, info uh, based on this okay uh, thank thank you uh, thank you so much maha for your time and explaining uh, the 99 test automation framework and also taking each and every questions uh, thanks a lot bharat yeah so uh, what we uh, what we we'll do right now is uh, uh, so we have been getting a lot of questions uh, regarding the webinar and uh, you know regarding the uh, videos so post this webinar we'll be posting uh, details about the webinar and you know we'll be publishing a blog post and also we'll be having a recording of this session given to you uh, by, uh, apart from this we as uh, maha already mentioned we will also be starting a slack channel for all our testers where we will be onboarding you and we will be creating different channels uh, for different kinds of projects so you can go through it and you can join automation channel and uh, uh, have the relevant discussions there apart from this if you have any kind of questions so uh, you can uh, any uh, you can call you know uh, you can write and shoot an email to me or bharat uh, as we have been communicating with all of you regarding uh, all the projects and all other community related stuff so you can uh, drop us an email and you know uh, we will be taking this forward from there so thank you everyone for your time uh, on the webinar and uh, we'll look forward uh, to your participation in the upcoming 99 test automation project and also to the uh, to contributing to the 99 test uh, framework thank you so much thanks everyone